Okay, we're going to look at section 11.2. This is going to be a very easy and short section for you, I do believe. We've talked about trapezoids, uh, rhombi, and kites before, especially the kites. But let's see what we've got going on. For an uh, area of a trapezoid, which I know that we mentioned before, um, we're going to take one half the height of the trapezoid, which once again has to be our perpendicular height. So we have to find, well that's not situated very well there, let's move it off just a little bit like that. Okay. Our height must be perpendicular to both bases. It must be. Um, so our height must be perpendicular to base one and the height must be perpendicular to base two. The height must be that perpendicular. So I take one half the height uh, times the sum of the bases. Some students and even some teachers like to write it like this, which is exactly the same thing. The height times the sum of the bases divided by two. One thing, though, I want you to notice is very similar, very similar to what we talked about in the last section, which is why it's going, we're going to um, peel a lot of time off of this video. We have another 90-degree triangle, another right triangle in there. So, again, we're going to be using Pythag. We're going to be using Sokotoa. We're going to be using 30-60-90. We're going to be using 45-45-90. Okay, so we're going to be using all of these things. Now, I want to point out to you another thing. Always remember that this piece here is going to be equal to this piece down here. So sometimes when you're trying to patch together a perimeter, uh, remember that that is, uh, is true. Also remember that this side does not have to be equal to this side unless, those two legs are not equal, unless you have an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, an isosceles trapezoid means the two legs are equal. You won't always have an isosceles trapezoid. So just be alert to those things that you already know. Let's look at a couple of examples. Bring this in a little bit. One of Brianna's trapezoid-shaped totes is shown. Find the amount of material used to make the side shown. So in other words, we need to know the region that's covered, so we're looking for the area. Just very simply, as I've told you before, I want you to write that formula down so that it gives you a focus of what you know and what you need to find. So I'm going to plug in everything I know. I'm looking for the area. The height is the perpendicular distance, so that's the 30. The bases are 28 and 58. Okay, so here you can see, again, you're going to find your surface area of your uh, tote, as they're calling it here, and make sure since it's area, you answer in square meters. Okay, let's look at what uh, the guided practice tells us. Find the area of glass used to make the windshield of a van shown at the right. See, it's a little off center there. There, now you can see where that height is. Once again, write your formula that the area is one half the height times the sum of the bases. So the area is one half the 38 times 72 plus 85. And even though you can use your calculator to do some of this arithmetic, and I might add it's easy arithmetic, you need to show work so that if you miss something, I can give you credit for what you had down there that was correct. And this is in square inches. Okay, all right, let's look at another example or two. This is a really good example. It covers a lot of information, so I do want us to look at this one. Um, 
Emilia designed the pennant shown for her team. Find the area of the shaded portion of her team's pennant. Now, of course, we have the pennant here. Notice how in the second picture, the authors of our book have divided that pennant into a rectangle and a right triangle. That was a very wise move. Also, we knew that this long length, this long piece, this long side there of the pennant was 10, and I don't know what the two pieces are individually. So they've named those with two variables. So we have an X for the side of the rectangle, and then they used L for the side of the right triangle. So the first thing that we do here, or that they did, and I agree with, they used the Pythagorean theorem to find L. Once again, remember that this is not set up L squared equals 8.5 squared plus 4 squared. Many, many good students want to always put the unknown by itself, but that is not true. The hypotenuse is always on the side by itself. So they have it set up beautifully that the 4 squared plus that unknown L squared is the 8.5 squared. Okay, now again, using your calculator here will be helpful, but just like they did, you can use your calculator to, to help you with the calculations, but showing your work is, is not, uh, you can't justify replacing the work shown. Okay, uh, a, a calculator facilitates the work, but it doesn't replace the work. Okay, now once we have 7.5 for our length up here, I can just subtract that 7.5 from the 10, and that will tell me what the x's are, right? So that's going to mean that my two x's are two and a half each. Now it looks like we have just about all the information that we need. We can use, again, I love how they wrote the formula. There's our formula. One half the height. The height is the perpendicular between the two bases. And the bases are always parallel. Base one is always parallel to base two. So one half the height times the sum of the two parallels. And that's going to work out to be, in this case, um, 25 even. So 25 square inches. I love that problem because it, it asks you to think a little bit more than just to plug in and, 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 and uh, churn out. I don't think we can make the um, work for the next formula any easier if we tried. The rhombus and the kite, although they are not the same thing, they have the same formula. And that formula for their surface area, their area, really we don't need surface area unless we have a, a three-dimensional figure. Their area is one-half the product of their two diagonals. What if you're not given their diagonals? Well, what do we remember about the diagonals of a rhombus and the diagonals of a kite? We remember that they are perpendicular. Hence, we have all those little right triangles again. Okay, remember a rhombus has all three sides the same and the diagonals are perpendicular. With a kite, we have two sides equal and two other consecutive sides equal. We have the diagonals are perpendicular. We have these little angles are congruent to each other, the angles that are formed by the non-congruent sides. So remember all of those rules as we look at these. And I think if you look at these examples, you're going to see this is pretty simple. Okay, our first drawing in example 3a is a kite. Write the formula. One half the product of the diagonals. It helps you remember. They give me both of them. They give me 8 is my horizontal diagonal and 15 is my vertical diagonal. Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 15 is 60. My area is 60 square meters. Looks like here they gave me half the diagonal. They gave us 12, so this down here is 12, because remember your diagonals bisect each other in your, um, in your uh, rhombus, and we have a 10 and a 10. 
So we have one half diagonal one times diagonal two, or one half of 20, because 10 plus 10 is 20, times 24, because 12 plus 12 is 24. So half of 20 is 10, 10 times 24 is 240. Again, down here, let's set this up. They just gave us halves again. They won't always give, give us halves. Sometimes they'll give us holes, and sometimes they'll make us use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to have one half diagonal one times diagonal two, or one half of 14 times 12. Seven times 12, 84 square millimeters. And then for the kite, once again, Write down that old formula. Just as straightforward as it can be. I love this page. This is page 792 in your book. It's got a beautiful summary here of all of the formulas that you will have had after you study 11.1 and 11.2. So that's a really nice uh, thing to, to, for them to pull together there for you. Let's look at a few more examples, and then we'll be, we'll be done with this particular section. One diagonal of a rhombus is twice as long as the other. If the area of the rhombus is 169, what are the lengths of the diagonals? So once again, my formula is that the area is one-half the product of the diagonals. Remember, product means the answer when you multiply. So if we let x be one of the diagonals, the other diagonal would be 2x. So when we multiply this out, they tell me that the area, they give me the area, it's 169. So let's just solve this algebraically. Once you get that, the um, formula set up, you can forget that it's a word problem and just do the algebra. We'll canceling here. So x is a plus or a minus 13, but I reject the minus because we're looking for a length. So if x is 13, then the other diagonal must be 26. Okay, let's look at um, 4a over here. They give me the area again. The area 92 is 1 half diagonal times diagonal. Okay, diagonal is x, another diagonal is 22. So 92 is 11x. x is 92 over 11. And if you want to change that, that's going to be um, 8 and 4 elevenths, I believe. Let us look at our trapezoid here. The area is one-half the height times the sum of the bases. Area is 177. Height is 13. Bases are x and 11. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 first to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to have 354 equals 13 times x plus 11. I'm going to distribute that there. Well, first I'm going to see if that 13 will divide into the 354 evenly. It does not. So that means I'm going to distribute my 13. 143. Let's subtract that 143 from each side. 211. Then divide each side by 13. 16.2. Let's see, did it tell us how far to take it? It did not. So we're going to get about 16.2. And notice since I'm looking for a, um, a length there on both A and B, I'm not going to put those in square units because I was just looking for a missing dimension. Okay, I want to look at 4C. Find the area of the kite shown. Now, this little blackened piece they put in here, right in here, they blackened that to make sure you understood that that's a 6. Okay? So, um, I'm finding the area of a kite. So, that is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. 
Okay, I don't know my diagonals, but I have enough information to find them. Look at that blue right triangle. The hypotenuse is 10, one leg is 6. That means my other leg is going to be 8. And if that leg is 8, since the little diagonal is bisected, my second um, piece of the diagonal is 8, so one of the diagonals is 16. I've got some tiny writing coming in here. Okay, now let's find that missing length on that uh, yellow right triangle. My hypotenuse is 17. So the 17 squared equals 8 squared plus that length I'm looking for squared. 17 squared is 289. Double checking. Yep. So our x squared is going to be 225. x is 15. Okay, so this, I'm going to mark in red, is going to be 15. Okay, so the 15 in the red plus the 6 of the black, that gives me my other diagonal of um, it'd be 16 plus 5. I'm sorry, 15 plus 6. I got a little dyslexic moment, didn't I? 21. So half of 16 is 8. 8 times 21 is 168 square inches.